Games on Scratch is, you should know what this series is at this point. I take a game and play various Scratch versions of them, checking to see how they go about remaking or reimagining various popular franchises. Because of how iconic, old, and established it is, Mario should be a pretty interesting choice for the series. There's a lot of decisions to be made regarding the type of game, physics, whether to remake an older title or reimagine a newer one, not to mention the various Mario spin-offs we've seen over the years. This should lead to an interesting variety of games, starting with our first one, the aptly named Super Mario for Scratch. This game sucks! I'm sure it does, Waluigi profile picture. I'm sure it does. So the game starts with a snazzy little title screen, something that isn't all too common with most Scratch games. The controls are also listed in the game, rather than in the description. Graphically, I'm glad the developer, Brad Games, chose to use custom Mario sprites rather than simply reusing existing ones, something that's all too easy to do because of the many older Mario games. There's a surprising amount of content in this game. A full four-level world plus three bonus levels. That's more than the vast majority of Scratch games. The first level, Piranha Plant Plains, is a pretty typical Mario opening level. The main gameplay difference is that mushrooms heal your health, and there are no power-ups. After that, we have a desert level. There's a glitch where if you jump at a block at the wrong angle, you'll fall through the floor, so uh, watch out for that, I guess. After that is a pretty easy underwater level, where you have to dodge Cheap Cheap. Respect for adding it, since underwater Mario has completely different animations and physics. Wait, what's that toad doing here, and what is he saying? Oh, okay. Lastly, we have the Bowser's Castle level. There's some awkward enemy placement, but overall, very manageable. We've finally made it to the Bowser fight, where we have to jump on Bowser's head three times. Then there are the bonus levels. This snow one, Blizzard Blow, is fine, but that block glitch is still here. There's also a pretty annoying spring jump right at the end of the level, but after getting past it, it's over, so there's no reason to complain about it. Next, we got a jungle one, which is also okay, but it has absolutely no new gimmicks, so it's pretty forgettable. Lastly, there's a moon-themed one. There wasn't any low gravity and the level was short, but it still at least felt different with less obstacles and more empty space. There's also a challenge mode, which lowers your lives and hits down to 1, so you have to beat the entire game without getting hit, which adds some level of replayability. By all definitions, this is about what you'd expect for a Scratch remake of Mario, but compared to everything else I've played, it's definitely on the higher end in terms of content. It's exactly what you'd want in a Scratch game. Rough around the edges, but a fun 20 or so minutes of content. Pretty good. Next, we got one called Super Mario World, but I don't know, something looks a little off. That's because, instead of remaking the game in any sense, it actually seems more like a generic Scratch platformer with a Mario skin. This one's in the vein of the Fortnite or Minecraft platformers. You just have to go from screen to screen, dodging piranha plants and the eventual Lakitu. There isn't really a punishment for dying. You're brought back to the beginning of the screen, but that's really nothing. This one's really short, without any power ups or other gimmicks. It's just an okay game. Next, we have Super Mario Z Christmas, which is apparently the 8th installment in the series. Right off the bat, we're hit with every control in the game, and man, there's quite a lot. And even better, this game has a story. One day, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Yoshi were walking down the street. Tonight was the Toad's Christmas Eve Festival, and Toad and Toadette are coming back from their honeymoon in Tampa today. Is Florida canon in the Super Mario universe? Then Mario realizes that he needs Flood in order to create the ice statue of Peach. So Mario and Yoshi go to Captain Toad's shed to find it. Mario and Yoshi meet Captain Toad, Flood, and Waluigi at the shed. Suddenly, they hear a big bang. It was Bowser stealing Peach. And the cake, too. You can take Peach, but not the cake, man. That is way too far. Hopefully she never finds out you said that. And now we're in the game. And oh man, these controls are really clean. While it's a lot to keep track of, everything feels natural to control, and by combining different actions, you can move really fluidly. The actual gameplay, besides just having fun jumping around, is to look around and collect stars. Around the map you can find various NPCs that talk to you. Anyways, it is Christmas, and Nintendo still hasn't invited me to Smash. Maybe someday. Oh, Waluigi, you poor, unknowing bastard. There are three different forms of Mario. Regular Mario, Flood, and Yoshi. And you can switch between them with the number keys. 
I personally like the regular, Mario Odyssey-inspired movement, since, like that game, jumping and diving never gets old. Eventually, you get all the stars and are able to move on to the next level. This one takes a much more linear approach. While it has more enemies, it's also a lot shorter. The very beginning of the course has a jump that looks like it needs Flood or Yoshi to get to, but by jumping and diving at the right time, you can actually just get through it with regular Mario. Eventually, you make it back to the ship, and the game's over. If you couldn't tell, I actually had quite a lot of fun with this one, and I think it all goes back to how tight and responsive the movement is, with it being fun just to move around with the tools you were provided with. I wonder if that has something to do with the fact that Griff Patch appears in the credits. For those who aren't in the know, Griff Patch is the number one most followed Scratch profile, and the guy behind Scratch Geometry Dash, Paper Minecraft, and my personal favorite, Scratch Getting Over It. I wouldn't be surprised if the Griff Patch code in there has something to do with the movement. Either way, this game was generally pretty fun. It was very short on content, but it's one game in a bigger series, so there's more for those who want it. I'd personally love to see someone remove the Mario brand and release a full game like this on Steam. I know I'd buy it. Next, we have a little bit of a collab. That is, of course, Minecraft Mario Platformer Episode 1. This game combines some aspects from both the 2D Mario games and Minecraft. You go around the map mining down trees and crafting them into items that help you complete the level. As you can tell, Mario's movements were a little phoned in, but hey, that didn't stop me from having fun. In the background of each stage, we get a nice low-res PNG of Minecraft Steve, really adding to that minecraft, minecraft charm. On level 5, I assumed the boat was like a moving platform, when in reality, you're supposed to wait for it to reach its destination, or else you'll fall through it. This led to a really weird glitch where the boat carried over after I died, and then I sailed through nothing. But besides that, it was a pretty fun game. The sequel is more of the same, but this time it has pictures of Minecraft Mario, to really add the Mario Minecraft charm. Next we got Super Mario Explore 4 Wario's Evil Empire. First off, we get to choose between Mario and Luigi. Then we can finally get into the game. The level to level experience is pretty much the same for each level. You go from screen to screen and fight Goombas, Koopas, and jump over gaps. You have to make sure to kill all the enemies before they could get to the left of the screen, as they don't despawn when you go to the next one. Luckily, the hitboxes are very lenient. Every once in a while, you collect an orb. Then the level ends when you get a mega orb. I like the carnival level, since forests, ice lands, and castles are all overused in Mario games. The third level is a fight with Wario himself, and it's hard. Like, unfairly so. As soon as he can, Wario hits you with a thunderbolt, which insta-kills. There are also spikes on the walls, which you're teleported right next to every time you hit him. That leaves you with a situation where you can't jump over the thunderbolt in risk of accidentally hitting Wario and getting teleported right back into him. I tried everything, but I just couldn't beat him. Eventually, I went into the game's code to try to skip ahead, and it unlocked this ice level, but it's really just more of the same aside from this snowman guy. Overall, this game was not very enjoyable, because bad. Next one is Mario 64 Cool Cool Mountain. This is a 2D reimagining of the map from the same game. It has four stars, Big Penguin Race, Little Penguin Lost, and two new ones, Shining on the Mountain Peak and Tucked Away in the Eel Nest. While the entire Mario 64 moveset hasn't been translated, we at least still have the long jump, and the style is a nice blend of N64 ridges and scratch drawings. And just like in Mario 64, after the star spawns, you can then grab the penguin again and throw it off the side of the map. Something needed for every good game ever. The only drawback is the eel in this game isn't half as scary as it is normally. Next, I want to talk about two simpler games, Super Mario Dodge and Super Mario Runner. They both have the same general idea of play the game until you die. With Dodge, you need to avoid lava from a volcano that follows your mouse. And for Runner, you have to just keep moving forward as long as possible. They're alright, but lack anything to really talk about. Now we have New Super Mario Bros. Online. Unfortunately, it's not the New Super Mario Bros. vs. mode online, but that already exists. In this one, you play as a tiny little Mario as you make your way through three levels. You jump really high in this game and that can make gameplay a little awkward at times. Level 1 is the plains, level 2 is supposed to be desert but has plains in the foreground, and the last level is a mushroom- After beating that, you get the message, CONGRATULATIONS! You have beaten all three levels and have won the game! 
don't forget to rate and comment. Okay, ending things off, we got Super Mario Desert Part 2. In this game, you play as the SMB1 Mario sprite as you navigate through a desert level. There are pipes and vines and other subspaces, so the level has quite a bit of variety. Around the map, there are PNGs of Goombas waddling after you, but if you avoid them, you can go on to collect three star coins. Aside from that though, there isn't anything else. The title says this is the second level, so I presume there are other levels in other parts of the game. It seems to take different elements from different games, and it's quite weird, but it was fine. I guess. I feel like Mario games contain some of the highest quality Scratch remakes yet. As Mario is such an iconic series with simple beginnings, it's common to try to remake the different games. And while some are definitely higher quality than others, the sheer reach of the Mario series is enough to get some talented Scratchers. That was, uh, that was games on Scratch. Let's go. Maybe next time it won't take another eight months.